and I'm probably going to go grab some lunch. He said, I want you to come with me. He said, we got a special treat today. There was an organization there at his school called the Rock of Israel. And what they were doing for the school, they were putting on a Passover feast. And so they had, you know, for their staff, that's what they were doing it for. And they had about, I don't know, 25 or 30 settings that day. And on each plate, they had each of these ingredients on the plate. And the gentleman, as he served the plates, he began to tell the story of what everything stood for, what it meant, what it would mean to Israel and all that. It blessed my heart. Especially when it came to the bitter herbs. And it reminded me of the sufferings of Christ. And what he paid for me on the cross of Calvary that day. How bitter that was. And so verse 9 says too that they were to eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water. Here's the deal. The lamb must feel the heat. It speaks of God's wrath. Brothers and sisters, you realize today that Christ has taken the heat for us. He took the full wrath of God in our place. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a sacrifice. In church, it says that this meat is not to be sodden at all with water. Don't miss that. May I declare to you today by the power of the Holy Spirit that this message of the gospel must not be watered down. Amen. It needs to be delivered with love, yes, but with the full heat and not watered down at all. And then God says in verse 10, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until morning, ye shall burn with fire. It says, let nothing remain. What is God telling us here today? He's telling us that the sacrifice is a finished sacrifice. Hello? What was one of Jesus' last sayings dying on the cross in John chapter 19, verse 30? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Aren't you glad that it's finished, church? Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus paid the price for your sin and my sin and he paid it in full on the cross that day? So we can be set free from sin to live for Him. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. It is finished. So they were to feed on the Lamb for strength and for spiritual depth. One more thing this morning. They were to feed on the Lamb for service. Verse 11, we see how they were to eat this meal. What did it say? With their loins girded. God simply saying they were to be ready to go where the Lord would lead them. Ready to go and serve. Also it said with their shoes on their feet. Church, this morning there were to be no delays. No delays when the call came for them to move. <clears throat> and they would be ready to walk. How about you today? Are you ready to go and to serve wherever he leads you this morning? Are you committed and ready to walk in his strength? And it also said that they were to go with staff in hand. Why? Because they were to be strangers on the way. They were to be strangers on the way. 
God said, we are just pilgrims here below, right? Just passing through. Remember that. This land is not our home, brothers and sisters. We are just temporary residents. Our true home is in heaven. With God. 1 Peter 2.11 Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Hebrews 11, 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. You see, they didn't get to step into that promised land, but praise God. They were able to step into heaven. Amen. Those that were obedient. Friends, are your loins girded this morning? Are your shoes on your feet? Is your staff in your hand? Are you ready to go where he tells you to go? Like them. We've got to obey our marching orders. You say, what are they, Brother Jeff? I think Matthew 28, 18 through 20 sums it up perfectly. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. That's our marching orders. That's where God is leading us this morning. Are you ready to go? Cypress Baptist, I'm just saying this morning, there are still lands to conquer and people to reach. So are you feeding on the land? Because if not, you're going to be weak on this journey. So I want to encourage you this morning. Start feeding on Jesus. Get in the Word and start feeding on Jesus. Because I know this, Christ will be adequate for the most difficult journey. He will. Listen, I'm just saying that there are provisions in Christ's death for us all today. Number one, there's provisions for forgiveness of our sins. Number two, there is provision for justification. Being in a right, restored relationship with the Father. We don't have to be far away anymore. We can be near, amen, in His very presence of the sacrifice of Jesus. And there is provision for overcoming in this daily life each and every day. Jesus is all you need, brothers and sisters. He is all you need. So I ask you, do you know him today? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you saved? Because the death angel's coming, amen. We've got to make sure we are under the blood. That we are saved. Heavenly Father, thank you for the power in the blood. Thank you for Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Father, my prayer today, if there's anyone that's not washed in the blood, they haven't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, by faith. Father, I pray today that they would just pray a simple prayer and invite Jesus in. That they will confess that they're a sinner, that they cannot save themselves, just like the Israelites could. Father, they can't save themselves, but they will trust that Jesus is the Son of God your provision for them. 
that he is the Savior of the world, that he died on the cross. He shed his blood as the Lamb of God 